Hello my dear friends, you're on the Military Summary channel and this short video we're going to discuss the most important events that took place during the previous night of the local time. And first the video we're going to start with Kharkiv and uh, today the Russians made another massive attack of the town using the different types of weapon including drones and there was a very massive drone attack. On this video for example we can see a uh, night, uh, uh, maybe the evening and uh, the Russians were attacking the town with drones, we see some person was trying to film the area to film the situation and the most important part of this video is that um, if you have access to map you can open this video and you would hear that there was no resistance and no barriers from the Ukrainian side where I'm talking about the air defense systems so the Russian drones were flying above Kharkiv without any problems and without any resistance and they attacked very likely some uh, some factories some positions some concentration probably the Ukrainian forces some some let's say energy facilities objects and so on and there are a few more interesting thing in the area is that as you can see according to the video and the photos most of the town was under complete blackout uh, no electricity no supply just few windows where with some electricity very, very likely that these apartments uh, that you can see in front of your screen have their own generators or something like this Another big problem for the Ukrainians in Kharkiv direction is that the Russians currently start using uh, the guided bombs, uh, long-range guided bombs, and also the Russians face no resistance and no barriers from the Ukrainian side. On this video we can see the consequences of another Russian attack using the guided bombs in the area of the village by the name of Dirgachi. And this is a very important video. On this video we can see the Ukrainian investigators who are trying to get this necessary data, probably for some criminal uh, criminal things against the Russians. I'm not sure that uh, they will be ever investigated by somebody or the Ukrainians are able to um, find some responsibles for the strikes. But anyway, we see that from now on the Russians start using not just Geran drones, ballistic missiles. The Russians start using guided bombs as the Russians use in the area of Kherson direction or something like this. And if we calculate the distance, let's say, of the possible Russian attack, so the Russians see, we see that 60 kilometers and no any a Ukrainian air defense. Uh, furthermore, we got more details about Kharkiv itself. As you remember, a few days ago, on the, in the beginning of the 20th of March, uh, the Russians conducted significant number of missile strikes in the area. As a result of those attacks, the Russians destroyed few or damaged few on the power plants in the area, and Kharkiv, the city of Kharkiv, was um, went into complete blackout without almost electricity at all. On these photos, we can see uh, Kharkiv. Most of the buildings, most of the apartments, without electricity just few regions have more or less a stable supply of uh, energy but most of the town is in complete darkness and the reason of that is of course the Russian strikes against energy um, facilities for example on the 20th of March the Russians attacked Zaporozhye power plant number five on this video we can see the consequences of Russian attack. As you can see from now on this uh, power plant is not operate, uh, can't be operated anymore by the Ukrainians and uh, very likely according to experts uh, the Ukrainians required significant time, significant number of days, months probably to restore the functionality of this power plant. Furthermore uh, the Russians uh, the, uh, published another photo, satellite photo from Slobozhansk power plant, another power plant that Ukrainians were using to support their uh, to support the city and there are two pictures as you can see the left one this one was made on the 11th of March of 2024 the right one was made on the 23rd of March of 2024 and there are a few important differences the first one is uh, when talking about the first photo there is a smoke the is the result of the work of the power plant and in the right uh, picture we don't see any smoke but we can see two holes in the right sector in the right part of the building very likely the Russians hit the end engine part and maybe it's very important part but the sources are saying and experts are saying that it also will require the Ukrainians few months until they are able to restore uh, the uh, let's say the work of this area so this is Kharkiv direction complete darkness complete absence of Ukraine air defense and we can say the perfect the perfect foothold and the perfect time for the Russians to start something big something bigger that they started ever on this direction but before starting of course 
first i believe that we should also discuss odessa area another town where we see complete absence of ukraine air defense uh, for example uh, today the sources reported that the russians attacked with ballistic missiles with drones the ukrainian positions in sanatoria odessa and according to information we have the Ukrainian special forces and special services intelligence forces were using this area uh, for let's say uh, some maybe concentration of forces or some bases some headquarters for preparing for further operations and what can you see from all these videos as well that Ukrainians also uh, have no electricity most of the town is cut off from this energy supply uh, there is another blackout and we can say that this is also the perfect a place the perfect situation for the russians to start something so before we continue moving further we see that in ukraine there are at least two regions odessa and kharkiv area that has a lot of common things first of all air defense is suppressed second thing both towns either odessa and kharkiv has some strategical meaning for the russians strategical value for the russians uh, first no complete absence of air defense and complete uh, blackout so we can see that a lot of common things but if we continue talking about the same thing we can see that currently Zaporozhye and the Zaporozhye this town that located to the north east west of Rabotina has almost the same problems has lots of common things with the situation in Odessa and Kharkiv and the thing is that during the previous few days as we remember the Russians attacked Dnipro a hydropower plant and we saw a lot of videos of consequences of those strikes uh, once again let's increase the numbers of updates it will give us a better uh, picture and a better understanding what did happen with the area uh, so now this uh, power plan is no longer available to generate electricity and er energy for now we still haven't received any updates from the city itself whether uh, the ukrainians have possibility to supply the area with necessary required electricity or something like this but very likely that the russians within the next few days will find the power plan that the the sources you the authorities used to supply city and they will make another attack also we see uh from uh, our classification complete absence of air defense uh we see uh, that this is also strategical value city for the russians because this is the part of zaporozhye area that voted to become a part of russia and uh, so we see now three areas in ukraine that has strategical let's say um interests for russia odessa zaporozhye and of course uh, Kharkiv area and the final and the fourth uh, part is Kiev Kiev was under very heavy attack from the Russian side as well but the main difference between Kharkiv Kiev and uh, Kiev and Odessa is that Ukrainians still try to protect the sky of this uh, town with um, Patriots air defense and now the reason why the Russians still haven't started bombing and destroying the energy facilities in the area just the presence of Patriot systems on the ground but if you remember yesterday we discussed that the russians have already destroyed two patriots maybe the western countries have already replaced the um, air defense system of ukraine which is unlikely because due to the critical situation with this type of weapon but according to information we have there are not so many patriot systems left in europe itself uh, maybe few in poland few in germany and many may, a lot of lots of countries have but the question is who is going to give ukraine uh, their patriot system who is going to uh, replace for nothing and to send patriot system to ukraine in exchange for nothing just for promises and possibly the these uh, possible air patriot systems would be also destroyed uh, by the russians furthermore today we got very interesting video from the head of ukrainian sbu it's a special services and today uh, this person he's the head he's very important he's very auth authorized person in ukraine and today he basically um, told uh, to the entire world that uh, Ukrainians are responsible for killing of every uh, everyone in Russia during the previous terrorist attacks. We're not talking about Krokus City Hall. We're talking about Ladlen Tatarsky, about Zakhar Prilepin, about uh, the LPR uh, prosecutor uh, General Sergei Garenka, and many many other uh, people. Uh, let's say who is uh, on the Russian side, bloggers, authorities, and so on, and they basically reported that it was their fault who uh, responsibility and they prepared everything 
single attack so we see uh, another step of escalation and uh, today we got another more additional reports about the ukrainian mobilization law and according to information we have in the new draft law on mobilization there is a rule on the conscription of people from the age of 18 not from 21 not from 25 of the western countries were requiring and demanding the ukrainians go move further they are going to start the conscription of people from age of 18 and all these things all these procedures are doing just for one purpose not to allow the russians to break through the ukrainian defense belt and to capture one of four strategical objects or maybe all of them and we are talking about Odessa, zaporozhye kharkiv and kiev four main important points for the russians which has lots of common things and which we and based on all these common things we can make a conclusion that the russians have some interest but ukrainians still don't know and don't understand where exactly the russians are going to make their main and the final strike furthermore we got additional reports from the head of ukrainian intelligence budanov he he reported uh, the head of state intelligence service of ukraine budanov threatens new terrorist attack in the depths of russia all these reports were received after the yesterday attacks with turkon on ukrainian uh, headquarters of the special officers in Kiev. So we'll see what is going to be next, obviously. Now we are moving to the situation on the ground. We have additional reports and additional updates. The Russians continue moving further to the west in, from Toninka towards Yesnabrodovka. We have additional geolocations published by the Ukrainian side. On these videos we can see the Russian attack using two, two tanks and the Russians were attacked by the forces of 25th Air Mobile Brigade. And this is very interesting if you are uh, following the redeployment of forces you might see you might mention that uh, now the ukrainians were forced to redeploy 25th air mobile brigade and this brigade used to like used to be uh, located in the area of Tirny. and uh, for some reason the ukrainians decided to move them here i don't know for sure why they decided to do this but maybe this is also the reason why the ukrainians right now are so weak on Cherny direction where the russians continue advancing but before moving to Cherny, a few more additional interesting things according to information we have uh, we have different confirmations from different mappers like pro neutral and pro uh, neutral and pro russian sources and they are saying that the russians as a result of offensive operation managed to establish control over this part of berdachi and we can say that this is the game changing uh, achievement game changing advance from the russian side now we can start counting not just uh, months or days of berdachi but very likely hours uh, the only reason why the ukrainians still have possibility to hold this uh, village for a long time is that if the ukrainians in the area will, would be encircled and they would decide not to surrender to the russians so this is the only reason why the ukrainians can hold this area maybe a few days longer than they um, control in other any other situation uh, the russians continue counter artillery duels on the deep uh, the near rare the russians destroyed another howitzer from the ukrainian forces who was supporting the ukrainian defense fans in the area so uh, significant uh, achievements in the area we expect additional reports from the russians about additional progress in berdichi and of course further to nitailova uh, umanska yasnabrodovka now we are moving to the northern part to Terny. we have additional geolocations additional progress from the russian side according to information we have the russians managed to advance further along this uh, tree line along this forest and the russians managed to improve their positions along these positions as you can see we have adjusted the map we have geolocations confirming this on this video uh, which was made by the ukrainian sources we can see the fpv drone strikes against the russian forces who were attacking the ukrainians in Terny and yampolovka the ukrainians were trying to slow them down as as they can as they could but as i understand this didn't help them and the russians managed to capture additional tree lines and additional positions so for now the russians have created the broad front line and from these positions they can attack Terny at least uh, from the south uh, let's say from the southeast uh, just from the uh, east and of course from the north 
east in three directions and very likely that ukrainians will uh, let's say f run away from this area very fast very soon and very likely first updates we're going to start receiving also very very soon the russians reported about their uh, some that they were forced to abandon their positions in the northern part of sinkovka uh, they managed to enter this uh, village probably 10 or 20 times during the previous six months but always after another ukrainian counter-attack the russians retreat and today we got additional video uh, how the Russians maybe controlled some part of Sinkovka, but the Ukrainians counterattacked, and as a result of pressure, as a result of fire, the Russians were forced to fall back towards Liman Pervy. So we will adjust the map in, in the Ukrainian favor. So today is very interesting day, as you can see. The beginning is very uh, has pr promised us a lot. So let's see what is going to be next. Let's see what uh, how the day is going to be finished. And in the final part of the video, I would like to show you uh, the video that was published published by the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation. On this video we can see the launch of Tsirkon, that Tsirkon that uh, we, the results of the strikes of which we saw yesterday in Kyiv, a very fast uh, rocket that has no analogs in the world, uh, that uh, managed to bypass up to seven, six or seven hundred kilometers just for six minutes. And I'll remind you that just after the Ukrainians uh, started the, let's say, air defense alarm in a few seconds later the Russians got the target and destroyed the headquarters of some special forces in Kyiv. And that's it uh, for today. Military Summer Channel reminds you can die many violence in the world. Thank you for your watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes, join my Patreon and have a good day. Bye-bye.